Welcome, welcome back to factoring practice. So, uh, in this case, we're looking at the kind of the more complicated version of factoring trinomials uh, when we have a leading coefficient other than one. Remember, just I know I said in the last video, but leading coefficient is the number, um, the coefficient that's uh, with the term that has the highest power. So, and it's usually the first term because we're um, we like to put trinomials in. Uh, standard form, which means you put the x, the x squared out front, or the you know the highest power out front, but not always. So, so notice all of these have a leading coefficient other than one. So here the leading coefficient is two, leading coefficient is three, leading coefficient is nine, four down here, eight down there, etc. Okay. So the same idea that we're doing when the leading coefficient is one still applies here. We look at the, the last term to find out whether, um, find, to discover whether the signs are the same or different. So this tells me the signs are the same. So when I go to factor, I know that they're going to be the same. And this tells me that they both have to be positive. Okay, so I know it's positive, positive. Now, um, and normally, if there was a coefficient was one, leading coefficient was one, I just put an x in both places. But that's not going to work here because x times x does not equal 2x squared. So we have to come up with the options. Well, in this case, my only option is 2x and x, okay? And over here, the only option for 7 is 7 and 1. So we only have one option here. So we just so I'm going to put a 2x here and an x there. Then I just, just have to put 7 in the right place to make things work. So if I put a 7 here, I'm going to be multiplying by x. And that's probably not going to get me 15. So I think I'll put a 7 there because that way I'm multiplying by 2, and then just a 1 there. So notice that 2x times 7 is 14x. 1 times x is x. 14x plus 1x does give me a 15x. Okay? All right. Moving right along. I, I, I didn't follow my own rules. So whenever we're factoring, in the first step, it's always to look for the GFC. So in this case, in that case, there wasn't a GFC. Here, there still isn't a GFC. In other words, I'm looking for a number or that will divide into all three terms. Or if all three terms have a variable, I can pull out a variable. <laughs> okay. Um, so here, I check. Not, there's not a common factor to all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and break it into binomials. I notice the last term is negative, which means I have a positive and negative sign in my binomials. And let's see what my options are. My options are, on this side, just 3x and x. I only have one option, so I'm going to go ahead and put 3x and x in there. And, um, of course, I might have to switch the positive and negative signs because they might be in the wrong place, but we'll, we'll deal with that when we come to it. And I look at 12, and I think, okay, we got 3 times 4, we got 12 times 1, and we got 2 times 6. Now, I am looking for a difference because the signs are different. But I'm not just looking for a difference in these numbers. I'm looking for a difference after they've been multiplied by these numbers. So basically what I'm doing is multiplying by 3, multiplying one of these numbers by 3, and one of them by 1, and then looking for a difference of 5. So that's why these are a little bit harder, because you can't just look at the factors and, whether, and look for a difference in some. You actually have to do some multiplication. So in this, And I'll just take them one at a time. So I'll take this first pair. So if I multiply 3 by 3, I get 9. And that means I'd multiply 1 by 4. That would give me 4. And I ask myself, is that a difference of 5? And whoa, look at that on the first try. Uh, that's kind of impressive. The difference between 9 and 4 is 5, isn't it? So that means that I want 3 times 3. And I want 4 times 1, because that would give me the 9 and the 4, right? But I want it to end up negative, and it and I well, I'm really lucky today. I hit it right because that's going to give me a negative nine and a positive four, isn't it? Because three x times negative three is a negative nine, and four times x is a positive four, and that's exactly what I wanted. I want to end up with a negative five. Okay, so let's do another one here. Boom, boom, boom. Now the options here are nine x and x or three x and x. The options here are just 2 and 1. So once again, since there's only one option, I'm going to put that in. Now, notice also the last term is positive, which means they're the same sign. I look over here and find out that it's positive. So both are positive. So that's nice. 
So now I just got to figure out whether I want the 9x and the x or the 3x and the, whoops, 3x and the 3x. And I'm looking for a sum of 11. So if I, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably 3 and 3. So that would be, if I multiply 3 times 2, that would be 6. And I multiply 3 times 1, that'd be 3. And 6 plus 3 is not 11. Oh, I guessed wrong. Look at that. Okay, so that means I can throw that one out. And then if I take, um, probably not 2 times 9, I'll go 2 times 1x is 2, and 1 times 9 is 9, and that is a sum of 11. So that means I want to multiply the 9x by 1, and on the x by 2. There we go. Okay, again over here, we have a, the last term is positive, which, and the middle term is negative, so that means I have two negatives. And we only have two options. I mean, we only have one option for each. So we have a 7x and an x, and then a 3 and a 1. So do I want the 3 with the 7 or 3 with the 1? Well, since I'm trying to get 22, it's probably 3 of 7. And notice if I put a 3 there, 3 times 7 is 21, and then plus 1 to give me the 22. Again, I'm looking for a sum because the signs are the same. Okay. Okay, I think I'll do a couple more, and then I'll turn it off and do a bunch of them and turn it back on so you can check yourself. This one looks like a humdinger because there's so many choices on the first one. So, But notice that 2, there's only one choice, 2 and 1, so that's nice. The th last term is negative, which means I have different signs, so i got a plus or minus, right? And then over here, I've got a lot of options. I have 18x times x. I have 9x times 2x. I have 3x times 6x. And that might be it. And I'm looking for a difference of 9. But there's a 2 being multiplied by one of them, right? Uh, so let's see. Um, 2 times... 2 is 4, 9 minus 4 is not 9, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 minus 3 is 9, ah, there we go. So 2 times 6 is 12, 1 times 3 is 3, 12 minus 3 is 9, there we go. So that means I want to multiply the 2 by the 6 and the 1 by the 3. And since the middle term is negative, I want the bigger one to be negative. So we want that one to be negative and that to be positive. Okay, one last turn, one here that I'll walk you through. Um, so in this case, okay, in this case, once again, it's just a 2 there, so we know it's 2 and 1. We The last term is negative, so we know it's got to be uh, negative positive. And here I only have tr two choices, 4x and x, and 2x and 2x. That's supposed to be an x there. Okay. So I'm looking for a difference of 7. So uh, it looks like, uh, well, 2 times 4 would be 8, and 1 times 1 would be 1. There's my 7. So I don't want that one. I want that one. And I want the 2 times the 4x and the 1 times the 1x. And I want the middle term to be negative. Look, at, I tried to trick you there with a plus or minus, but you know that the middle term is negative, right? So we want the 8 to be negative and the other one to be positive. Okay, I think I'm going to um, pause the video and do the rest of these. And you can work on them and yourself and then check back in to see if you got it right or not. Or just to, if, you got, if you get stuck, you can go back and check. Okay. Okay, so here um, I've completed the rest of these. So... Uh, you can run through and uh, look at those. Of course, you can pause the video. Um, I forget where I left off talking. I think it was up there somewhere. So there's all the answers that I got. Um, feel free to send me an email about any questions you have about any of these. And uh, just keep practicing. We want to get really good at so at uh, factoring because factoring becomes a really important skill later when we're trying to solve quadratics and we'll use that quite a bit um, in the fourth and fifth week of this class but then we'll also use it a uh, time in um, 141 so there's factoring
Thanks for watching.